Hello, my name is Jonathan and this is Jonathan's Days. This is a knitting podcast about all the things that I've been knitting in the last couple of weeks. Uh, my name is Jonathan and I live in London. I've been here for ooh, well over a decade, but I'm originally from Ireland and knitting is something I do every day. It's something I love a lot and I love to talk about it with you here on the internet. If you are brand new, welcome, welcome aboard, welcome to one of my days and all the fun things that I got up to. And if you're returning, welcome back. I have lots of nice things to talk about this week and I am very excited to share. There's lots of new bits, some old bits, some exciting things. So let's like jump right in. I feel like there's not much else to go about, but get on with the fun times. Uh, so let's start off with finished objects. So the first finished object I have is what I am wearing. This is the Badana Cardigan by Rosa Pamar. This was from an issue of Lina Magazine and I'm gonna grab it because it's right here. From this issue of Lina Magazine, this is issue number 16. And the cardigan is originally knit up in the Badana yarn. I hope I'm pronouncing that. I'm not really sure if I am. And this is what it looks like in the original yarn. And so originally, I believe this is a fingering weight yarn that's held with a fluffy mohair. Let's have a look, see, just to confirm. Materials. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So it's with Badana by Rosa Pomar and then uh, Silk Mohair by Isiger. And so, yeah, it's, hmm, doesn't say. Da, 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 da. I'm not sure what weight that yarn is. Maybe it must be a fingering or, yeah, not too sure, but it is knit on five millimeter and six millimeter needles. But the one I've knit, knit is knit out of Zagal, which is also by Rosa Pomar. So Rosa Pomar, uh, Retro Zaria Rosa Pomar, is a Portuguese, um, yarn brand and also they do patterns obviously and this is the yarn I used so this is the gall this is classified as a chunky I believe or bulky when it gets to that size I'm not really too sure but yeah so it's originally designed for six to seven millimeter needles of so bigger needles and the gauge is 14 stitches uh, for 10 centimeters so quite chunky this is in the color 907 which is the white and light green marl, which I really, really love. I love marls. If you know anything about me, it's that I love marls. And I have really, really enjoyed making this cardigan. I'm gonna like stand up a little bit so you can see. So it is knit. How is it knit? Top down, right? Yeah, yeah, it is top down. So you start up at the top, you knit the fronts. No, you knit the back first and then you pick up from the shoulders and come down and then you join kind of like under the armpits and then knit down to the bottom sleeves, knit in the round. It's a drop shoulder, so drop shoulder. So the seam for the sleeves is like halfway down my arm and it is obviously knit flat. The body's knit flat because it's a cardigan. It's not kind of cut open like a steak or anything. And the sleeves are knit in the round. So the main body needles are six millimeters and then the um, cuffs and the button band and ribbing is all in five millimeter needles. So for me, that's quite a big needle. I'm not really used to making garments in such large needles. So if you are a previous viewer, my last kind of garment sweater project was like a 3.5 millimeter fingering weight color work project which took a lot of work a lot of focus and I wanted to do something fun and chunky and easy and new and exciting and different and all those kinds of things just a project that was really like joyous for me and that's what this was for sure a lot of new things for me it was only my second cardigan that I've ever made this is definitely the year of the cardigan for me I have lots of cardigans coming down the line and it's not, it's my second cardigan, but this is the first one that I ever picked up a button band for. And I quite liked that it was such a kind of a large gauge because I know picking up button bands for people. So this bit here, and that can be kind of challenging for people. You kind of sometimes have to do it a few times over and over again. So it was nice to be able to practice it on something this size. The pattern I will say is written fantastically well, so well. 
I followed it exactly. I think the only modification I made was I made the sleeves a bit longer, but everything else is exactly how it should be. Now, I did mention we're using a much thicker weight yarn than what is called for in the pattern. Now, the designer themselves has made this cardigan with this yarn, and that's where I got the inspiration to do it. And so we kind of know it works. And so I went in kind of a little bit trepidatious, I'll say, like, okay, how is this gonna, is it gonna fit? Is it gonna work? I already knew that it's like an oversized fit and I knit the size two. So this is a size two on me. I'm about, whoop, falling over. I'm like a 38 inch chest usually is what I would say. I'm like a medium in most men's clothes. And this is how this fits. It's oversized. It's, I describe it more, like it feels more like a jacket than a cardigan. And so it is comfortable, easy to wear, really enjoy it, really like it, been wearing it a lot, but it's not like a, it's always like my outer layer. I haven't been putting like jackets over it because it's as well, the drop shoulder for me is not something I wear or have a lot in my wardrobe. So if you put a jacket on, it kind of pulls your sleeve up. So it's a different shape for me, but I've really, I really, really love it. I'm really, really happy with it. It was my first time sewing on buttons on a cardigan in knitting. So I got these little, wooden kind of toggle ones. First time doing a buttonhole um, in knitting. What else is new about it? I think that's more or less it for like new techniques, but I'm so happy with it. I really, really enjoyed it. Now I will say I use more yarn than, not call for in the pattern necessarily, but if you go to Rosa Pomar's Ravelry, she has this, the, the project page for this and she used six skeins six or seven, I believe six skeins, and I needed an extra skein. Now, that's probably because I extended, like, knit the sleeves a bit longer. I probably could have done the body slightly longer as well, but it really doesn't bother me, like, fit-wise. It's, it's super comfortable. And so I, the funny thing was, is I got this yarn in Lisbon at the Rosa Pomara store when I traveled there last year, and I got my skeins, as I was knitting it, I was getting towards, towards the end anyway, maybe I'd done the sleeves or something, and I kind of knew I was gonna run out of yarn, I was expecting it. Now, I wouldn't have mind, now the big thing about running out of yarn is that if you get a different dye lot, then the color is going to be different. And so I was like, okay, let me finish the sleeves and like the ribbing on the body and if all I have to do that's a different color is the button band, I could probably get away with it. Like color wise, it might look more like a feature rather than a mistake, essentially. So I ordered two more skeins just to be safe, even though I really didn't need two more skeins. I needed like six and one third. But now that I have, oh, and when they arrived from Rosa Pumar, it was the same dialogue, which is amazing. And it also makes me think maybe people aren't buying this yarn because it's fantastic yarn. I'm really, really happy with it. And so I felt like I was blessed by the Knitting Gods to get something months later from the same store and have it be the same dye lot. So I felt very blessed by that. So what I'm thinking, since this feels more like a jacket to me, I'm thinking I might do pockets. What do we think? There's all this space here. I could do like a patch pocket. So I have the yarn left over. This this kind of yarn isn't something that I'm really probably going to use, I don't think. So using it up to make a couple of pockets is, might be the best thing to do. So that's probably what I'll do in the near future. Probably not this side of spring. It might be something, you know, in nine months time when it starts getting cold, I'll pop some pockets on this. But otherwise, super happy with it. It's really like oversized, comfortable cardigan. What else do I have to say about it? I did mention in my previous episode, the amount of vegetation and vegetable matter in the yarn is annoying. You will have to pull it out as you go, but that is the price you pay for having a really rustic, minimally processed yarn that's from wild, you know, <laughs> essentially, you know, wild sheep. So not wild sheep, but you know what I mean? It's very off the land and it is nice most of the time, annoying some of the time, 
but I think I got most of it and I don't feel it. Like I could probably pull some out now as I'm sitting here looking at it, but either way, I'm so happy with this. I've been wearing it almost every other day. It's super comfortable. I like the way it looks. I like the kind of granddad style look and I think it's going to be a fun like jacket to wear into spring here in London which is hopefully starting to turn we have a nice kind of sunny day but I can still see grey clouds so we're hoping to like get there when it comes to spring and this would be a nice jacket so I'm really really happy with this anything else I want to say but yeah essentially you are trading if you do this you are trading a much smaller gauge yarn for a much larger gauge yarn I could probably even tell you Let's have a look what the gauge is called for. Oh, it's the same gauge, should be technically. Right, cool. So you're not. So this is, according to the label, is 14 stitches to 10 centimeters, and the gauge for this is also 14 stitches to 10 centimeters. Love that. Yeah, I don't know why I think it's so like dramatic. Ah, so it's worsted and lace in the pattern, and this must be a step up from worsted, which is bulky or chunky. I, I, don't, I don't know what the difference is between those two. But either way, highly recommend. A really simple, basic cardigan, super wearable. This, when is this issue from? It might be available as a single pattern. What date is this one from? Editor's letter. Ba, 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 ba. My king. I, this is my curse. I'm always like. Winter 2023. So, yeah, it probably isn't available as a single pattern yet. So, it might just still be in the magazine. Uh, so, yes, love it. I mean, I love Rosa Pomar's yarns. This is my first time knitting a Rosa Pomar pattern. I can't recommend it enough so well written, so much fun to knit, and nice to be knitting on six millimeter needles to make like a fun chunky cardigan. I highly recommend it to, if you're in a funk, if you're kind of doing a really complicated knitting project, put it down, pick up something satisfying, gratifying, fun, with a couple of new techniques. I think it's a great thing to do. So yes, so this is my Badana cardigan by Rosa Pomar in the Zagal yarn. I absolutely love it, can't recommend it enough and might make it again as a gift. I think it would be a great gift because it's so like oversized. It's like super comfy. You can give it to people, love it. So that's that one. Let me move on to the next finished object. Okay, so the knitting needle microphone is out because we've got a neck piece. Um, this is something that's been on my needles for a long time. If you're a long time viewer, then you'll probably recognize this. This is the Satellite Shawl. This is by Andrea Maori. This is Knit Up In Big Little Yarn Co, who is one of my favorite podcasters. I say all the time, one of my favorite podcasters does the Cozy Cardigans Knitting Podcast. And I have the colorways here ready to go. So the four colorways I use, the main color is Suki, which is the light gray. I'll take it off and show it in the camera properly in a second. Uh, the next one, which is the lighter blue is Ame. The darker gray is Kage. And then the color in between the brioche is called Hereditary. These were all part of her spooky summer collection in 2022. So it's like an older collection. I'm not sure how many of these colorways you'd be able to find in this day and age, but on her most recent episode of her podcast, she talks there's a lot of ready to ship skeins currently in her shop. So maybe you might be able to find some of the colorways there. Regardless, this is the Peruvian, Peruvian Highland, is it? Peruvian Wolf, Peruvian Highland. It's a Peruvian Wolf fingering base, which is a non superwash base, fingering weight, obviously. And I've loved knitting with it. I love Mel's colors. I love Mel's style. And I really, really enjoyed working on this. I will say I enjoyed working on it while I was working on it. I am kind of done with shawls for now. Never say never, but I do find I don't wear them out as often as I would like. And I wear them at home all the time. They tend to be thrown over my shoulders, uh, especially in the colder months, but they're not something I wear out that often. So I'm not really super motivated to work on them, which is why it took me so long to actually get this off the needles. This uh, pattern is 
really, really comfortable and fun and nice because it is mostly garter stitch. So it's lots of garter stripes uh, interspersed with brioche. So there's just plain garter, then there's some short rows in section, and then there's a garter sec or a brioche section. I apologize. And so you're not doing anything too complicated for too long before you have a break. And it is like enjoyable when I was in it and it took me a bit of time to just be like, Jonathan, focus up, finish it off, get it done, get it off your needles. It's really, really beautiful. And so I'm really happy with the finished project, but I'm probably not gonna be wearing it out super often because I don't wear shawls that often. We're coming into spring, but I, I, I do love it. So it's one of those things where I love the shawl, but I don't really wear it that often. I enjoyed the process, but it did take me a while. <laughs> so it's kind of like stalemate almost with shawls, but I am really, really happy with it. I love how it looks. And I can't recommend the pattern enough. The pattern's really great, fun. Andrew Murray, I do tons of her patterns. You're probably sick of me talking about them, but she does, in my opinion, make patterns that are really fun process knits as well as product knits. They're stylish, contemporary, well thought out, fun. And then the yarn itself is fantastic. Colors, amazing. The, and when I flip it around, you'll see the, tonal well not tonal the what's the opposite of variegated colorway which is the hereditary colorway and that is fantastic and I really really enjoyed using that so I will most likely be getting if I'm I'm if I'm going to get a yarn advent at the end of this year it's going to be Mel's for sure because I love her colors and I love everything she does so I'm happy to jump on board for that for my first kind of yarn advent but I'm getting ahead of myself let me put down my microphone and I can pull off the shawl and show you it in a bit more detail and we'll go from there how do I do this do I slot it into my there we go so hopefully you can hear properly this is the right side and then this is the wrong side So you can see the hereditary colorway on the wrong side of the brioche really pops. It kind of pools, but obviously since it's on the wrong side, it doesn't really bother me that much that it pools. And yes, it does match the painting behind me really, really well. Um, but this is the right side. It is a kind of triangular shape shawl, but because of the short rows it, that kind of swing back and forth, it gives it like a funny shape. You can see. Just lots of fun garter, a really long I-cord bind off at the end. And yeah, nice long rows there, keep you entertained, but not too crazy. Get up a bit closer. Wrong side. And right side. And to be honest, ooh, most of the time I'm, most of the time I've got it draped over my shoulders. All my shawls tend to be draped over the shoulder like this if I'm kind of bopping around at home. It's always dangerous though, because I'm always like, it's always the day I decide to make some like bolognese or tomato sauce that I um, got my shawl like this, but I digress. So yes, that is my finished object, second finished object of this video. It was. Again, good pattern, fun to knit when I was knitting it, but I found the motivation to actually knit it tough because I'm not sure much, how much of a shawl where I actually am all these years into my knitting life. But the yarn is fantastic. Really, really enjoyed it. Super soft, cozy, a little bit rustic, but not too rustic. Nice non-super wash base. Can't recommend it enough. And I loved the colors. So great recommendations for both. And if you don't watch Mel's podcast, Please do. I love, I think it's great. It's one of my favorites. And um, that's something I want to try to do a bit more of is more podcast recommendations. I feel like I used to do it all the time. If you have a podcast you really like that's like smaller, let's say, I guess less than 5,000, less than 4,000 subscribers, like please let me know. I'd love to watch and check out some new podcasters um, as we move into spring. But yeah, so this is the satellite shawl. I'm going to put my little microphone back on my neck and move on to whatever whips we've got going on. So let's get on with that. Okay, let's talk some whips. 
Right, I've got three whips. Let's start with, yeah, let's start with this one. This one, so those of you who watch a little bit will know there's kind of patterns I knit over and over again. And last episode, it was the shift cowl. I love how my yarn has gotten tangled. These, these yarns were sitting next to each other for seconds and now they're tangled. Oh my gosh. Anyway, talk amongst yourselves while I undo this. No, uh, so there are patterns that I knit over and over again. In the last episode, there was the shift cowl and it was my third shift cowl because I knit. I feel like I've knit one every year since I've started knitting. So I did my third shift cowl. This other pattern, this is my third, well, this is my third time making this pattern, but this is a slightly different version of that. But I have been a bit unwell recently and I was very tired and weak for want of a better word. And I'm fine now, out of, out of the woods with it. But it did mean that a lot of the things like designs and more complicated patterns that I wanted to tackle just fell by the wayside because I just didn't have the like brain energy or physical energy to do it. But so I cast on this the other day as just something fun and simple and relaxing for the Easter weekend, which, when I'm shoot is, which is when I'm shooting this video. And this yarn I've had in my stash for a little while. It came from Beautiful Knitters, which is one of my favorite yarn stores here in London. And it is some Knitting for Olive. Oh God, it's so tangly. It's Knitting for Olive. It's the, it's the mohair, guys. There's mohair here. It's the Knitting for Olive. Ooh. Classic pairing of the Merino and the Soft Silk Mohair. So these are the two. Look at that, it's like a cloud. And the merino is in the color oatmeal and then the mohair is in the color oat. So it's oat and oatmeal. And the pattern I'm knitting is the Stockholm Slipover. I'll hold it up here. By Petite Knit. This is it. It is in that awful stage where it doesn't really look like anything because you haven't picked up the neckband or the, the sleeve holes. But I wanted, normally I would kind of finish the skein of yarn that I'm using when I join for the body. And then when that finishes, I'll go back and do these. But this time I, I said, oh, let's just keep going with the fun stockinette, keep it simple and keep going till the end of the body. So that's where I'm at now. I'm going to get to the end of that. I have three skeins of each, which should be plenty for me for the slip over. And this is the V-neck version, obviously here. You can see the nice V-neck. And I've knit the regular round neck version twice. Uh, once with the uh, the same yarn. So I've, I've knit this before with this yarn. It's a great combo. And the Knitting for Olive is like one of the best quality yarns ever. I've never had a bad experience with it. It's always been fantastic in whatever base I've used. It lasts really long. My original Stockholm Slipover now is maybe two years, if not more older. I wear it all the time, maybe once a week, I wear it. I, I love it so much, such a versatile, light, but warm piece. And so I wanted the V-neck version, which I'm very, very excited about. The color is fantastic. I mean, it's a very petite knit to make a beige <laughs> version of one of her patterns, but um, it, is, it, is, it is wonderful. It's so soft. The oat and oatmeal, obviously the oatmeal is a darker, and the oat is lighter, so it has lightened it up, lightened it up quite a bit, and it does have little Marley moments. But I really, really like it. I'm already, I already know there's so many things in my wardrobe that I can wear this with. So right now I'm just having a nice time. It's been a long weekend, and I've just been enjoying knitting away on the body of this to get it done. So it's just one of those, you know me, I love a nice utility piece. So it is a really nice utility piece that I can wear all the time, throw on with things, don't have to think about too often. I mean, I love my show stopping, color work, amazing spin cycle, color changing brioche pieces, but sometimes they're hard to like style and wear <laughs> in a normal day. So I like having some basics, some slipovers that I can just throw on and go, which is also very, very fun. So yeah, that's the Stockholm slipover V-neck. I'll have it done by the next episode for sure. I'm sure I'll have the body finished in no time. The only one thing is I'm already dreading having to do the Italian bind off so many times across so many stitches, but it makes a great finish. So yeah, 
that'll, that'll be the only thing. But yeah, it's, it's great, can't recommend it enough. What I will say is, oh yeah, size. This is the medium size. I've knit the medium size before. I knit it to pattern, just I put way more length in the body for me and that's about it because I do feel it's quite short in when it's written to the pattern. So my first one, that's still fine, is a little bit short. My second one is like a perfect length and this one will also be perfect length because I'll be going off that. What I will say is that when I got this Seagal yarn from Rosa Pamar, I also picked up three skeins of this yarn, which is Mungo. It looks like this. And this is, where's the English? Mungo is a recycled wool and cotton yarn. It's entirely spun from pre-consumer waste generated by Portuguese spinning mills. The wool used in this yarn is sourced in Portugal and or Spain. So I love a recycled yarn. I love the creative ways that knitting yarn companies and brands come up with ways to reuse the waste and kind of byproducts of milling yarn. And this is another one of those. This is, I think it's technically a worsted weight. It can't be. Maybe DK. Anyway, either way, I picked this up because I want to make the V-neck slip over in a large size. And since this is cotton and wool, I thought it'd be nice for summer and I could wear it with nothing else as kind of like a summery tank top, maybe with a, like another tank top underneath it. But um, yeah, so it's cotton and wool. Yeah, so I'm quite excited to try this to see how it works. I've used the knitting for olive cotton merino and this one definitely, it doesn't have, it has minimal bounce, which is kind of what you find in 100% cotton yarns, is that it doesn't have any like stretch to it. But yeah, it is, it, it isn't as bouncy, but I'm interested to try this to see how it works. And I just picked like a nice cream. So I will do the large size in the V-neck slip over in this yarn to make a kind of summer top. So I wanted to mention that, that that's something that I have coming down the line. And I'm enjoying knitting this one so much that I might cast this one on right away. So I do apologize if it's a very boring slip over a couple of weeks for me, but we'll see. Depends on what the weather is doing in London. If the weather turns and all of a sudden it actually ends up being warm, we'll cast this on. But I also don't see that happening very, very soon. So yes, so that is my main whip. I will pull out my sock whip, little sock moment. This is my lunchtime project. I finished my first sock. It's got the yarn ball inside it. This is the DRK Everyday Sock. I knit this, oh, I need to weave in my ends. This is knit out of Garthnor. Pentland in the color Atlantic. I will show this briefly. This is the first sock, which is finished. I knit it to pattern apart from the foot, which I knit plain stockinette instead of ribbed all over. And this fits perfectly. I used almost the entire first skein or an entire 50 gram skein on this one. I made the second largest size for men in the DRK Everyday Sock. And I'm really, really happy with it. The bind off isn't pretty. I used the surprisingly stretchy bind off. It's not pretty, but when you wear it, who cares? Like how many people are looking at your sock when it's like this? So yeah, it's more about comfort and utility again for me with this sock. So this is done and I'm already like a toe toe into the second sock. Hopefully I'll finish this soon. My lunches have been a bit short at work. I've been trying to take time to do like a little meditation on my lunch hour. So that's 10 minutes less knitting time that I have on my lunch hour, but it's better for me in the long run. So yeah, wanted to mention that super briefly little sock talk for you, but yeah, I've always got a sock on the go most of the time. So yes, that's my lunchtime project with, and then my final whip. So it is the end of Q1, first three months of the year. Can you believe 2024 is already a quarter of the way done? So I wanted to update you on my sweet shop blanket by Laura Penrose. Good friend, friend, friend of the pod. <laughs> so yeah, this is my, if you don't know, this is a blanket project. I've been working on this since January. My plan is to do two squares a week for the entire year. And since this is the end of Q1, end of March, so at the time of filming, it's April 1st. And so because of that, 
I wanted to check in. So I feel like that's pretty good, good way to keep you updated without it being boring. So I'm gonna show you every quarter how I'm getting on. I have 25, 26 squares done. What's this? Yes, 25 squares, so exactly a quarter of the way in. The plan is to do 100 squares, but we'll see how we get on. So this is 25 squares. Ooh. Yep. This, this blanket is so much fun. When I wasn't feeling well, it was really nice to have this because it's, I know, yeah, I know all of the like patterns off by heart, so I don't really need to think about it too much. And it's been really fun revisiting yarns from previous projects. So I took all of like my blues, grays, neutrals, since that's what I knit with a lot of, and I put them all in a giant basket. And then as I need to do a new square, I just pull something out and try and like match it up is the wrong thing, but like what sits nice with the colors around it and then go from there. But I am so happy with it so far. It feels really, really big and it's hard to show, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's been great fun. It's so nice, so effective, such a, such a intelligent pattern, so clever. I am weaving in as I go, which you probably won't be able to see. Um, so that means I won't have hundreds of ends to weave in at the end, but yeah, it's been great fun. It's really, really relaxing. It's at the point now where it's going to really, it's like really over my lap as I'm working on it. And the only thing is, it's a bit tough sometimes to like turn when you're starting a square, but we soldier on. There's all sorts of yarns in this, but the main colorway, so this one here, all of these, this one is this, which is woolly knit. And this is the four ply British wool in the color morning frost. And so I have two big cones of this, and this is what I'm using for the main color. So I probably should weigh this and see how, since I'm a quarter of the way through, see how I'm getting on with this. Cause I have two of these and I hold them double cause it's a DK weight blanket. And so I soldier on through that with this and it's been so much fun. I fell behind a little, but I'm caught up now. This week, again, as of the time of filming, this is week 13, so I need to have 26 squares done if it's two a week. So I have one square to do, which I could probably do this evening and then I'll be all caught up. So yeah, we'll see how I get on during the summer when it's really warm and I have this giant blanket over my lap, but I think it's a, I think I can manage it by the end of the year. But yeah, I'm really loving it. It's so nice. I like, you know, I never thought I'd be a blanket maker, but I do love that I'm using up all my scraps. And I do love that at the end, I'll have like a massive piece that will go over. Well, it will fit on our bed, but most likely it'll be a couch blanket for us. And Laura's pattern is amazing. She's doing wonderful things with this technique, this series. So she's got the sweet shop blanket. What's the other one? Oh my God, you're shouting at the screen. There's the cushion. There's no way it's gonna to come to me, but look her up. There's all sorts of things you can do with these motifs. I think there's a new one she's working on and there is like cushions and blankets as well that you can do with these wonderful motifs. Such a pleasure to knit. When I saw her at Unravel, I just gushed at how amazing I think this pattern is and how fun it is to knit and how everyone should do one. So if you have a huge batch of scraps, this is the way to go. It's DK weight and you can do fun things, hold your, hold your fingering double, throw in a worsted, like it doesn't really matter. Uh, throw in some mohair, you can see I've done some mohair and then marl them. So like these ones are marled, some brights. What else do we got? Yeah, I just love it so much. It's just, it brings me joy every time I see it. And like with every square completed, I just like feel like such a sense of achievement. And it's, yeah, it's great. Can't recommend it enough. Sweet Shop Blanket by Laura Penrose, Penrose Knits. And yeah, that's my last whip. Life has been pretty crazy recently between me being sick, busy, all those kinds of things. We're planning trips for the year. I am always thinking about what's going on, how I can <laughs> knit my way through the year, wherever we're traveling, is there yarn shops, all that kind of thing. And the main thing is that as I'm coming into spring, 
my sewing fingers are starting so I have been doing a bit of sewing and it is coming up to me made May so if you're interested in sewing content or anything like that that you'd like me to do please let me know if you'd be interested in that. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to know from everyone, what was it? I had a question to ask everyone. I can't think of it. But the usual thing, let me know, drop me a comment. How are you doing? What are you working on? How is spring feeling in your area? Are you still in the depths of winter, kind of like we are, and you're still knitting away? Or are you feeling like it's time for like the spring and summer knits? You know, it's never far away. So let's all think about that. But thank you so much for watching. Please like the video. Please subscribe if you're not subscribed. And be excited for what's coming up. Now that I'm feeling a little bit better, once I get through these couple of projects, we've got some designs that I'm hoping, I'm hoping are gonna go onto the needles. So there'll be lots of fun stuff coming up in the year. Thank you so much for st sticking by and watching all the way to the end. I wish you lots of love and health and good times and happy knitting, crafting and making. Bye.